The Atari 5200 was a game system released in 1982 using three-year-old hardware for Atari's 8-bit computer line. It is one of the largest game consoles ever with a hidden panel for storing the controllers. And speaking of the controllers, they used an analog joystick with buttons on the sides and a numeric keypad. They are notoriously unreliable and uncomfortable, making them known as one of the worst controllers ever made. Meanwhile, the ColecoVision's design was drawn up as early as 1979, but was released in 1982. It was a very popular console that touted arcade-like graphics in your home. The controller used a disc-like design with buttons on the side and also a numeric keypad. Its controller is also said to be one of the worst ever made. Now, I have always been an Atari fan, and I have played many of the Atari 5200 games on the Atari 400 and 800XL computers, as they share the same hardware. Naturally, playing these with the original controllers makes things a little bit more challenging, so for the most part, I will only be comparing the game itself, and not the quality of the controllers. Also, there are some games that appeared on the ColecoVision and Atari computer, but not the 5200, that I also want to compare. That said, let's get started by comparing the game of Beam Rider. This shooting game by Activision is very similar to an arcade game called Juno First. Blast enemies on a grid, avoiding obstacles, and then blast the mothership when it appears. The Atari 5200 version is a fast-paced and fun game. The graphics are very minimal, but the gameplay more than makes up for it. The ColecoVision version is basically the same with what appears to be a higher resolution on the grid and the score. The sounds are a little bit weaker, but overall these versions are practically identical. So if I had to choose one or the other, you know, this is really a tie. Both of these games are great. Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom. This is a home port of the arcade game by Sega. Fly in a spaceship as Buck Rogers blasting and avoiding enemies. I remember the arcade version having super detailed graphics, and as you can see, the 5200 just can't match the detail. The scaling on the towers is a little choppy, and the collision detection is very suspect. The ColecoVision version starts off in the trench, which is how I remember it being in the arcade. Collision detection is also more forgiving, which I really appreciate. Between these two, I had more fun playing the ColecoVision version. Centipede, the classic Atari arcade game where you blast bugs. The Atari 5200 version looks, sounds, and plays very similarly to the original. However, playing this with a 5200 controller is interesting. Your blaster tends to follow where you point, which is just weird. The preferred way to play is with the buttery smooth trackball controller. The ColecoVision version is also good, but it has a different feel than the original. The character graphics are more cartoony, and the different blaster sounds really change the feel of the game. The ColecoVision's roller controller also works with this game, and it would be a travesty if it didn't. Still, the 5200 version looks, sounds, and feels more like the arcade game. Choplifter. The 5200 version of Choplifter looks to be a straight port of the Atari computer game, which means no real enhancements except to make it work with the 5200's controller. The graphics are monochrome and the sounds are dull. I really wish they had upgraded this version. The ColecoVision game has much better graphics and slightly better sounds. The tanks and jets are just as relentless, however. Also like the red slash yellow color cycling on the explosions. To me, it's not much of a contest between these two. I'd rather play the more enhanced version of the game, which is the ColecoVision version. Congo Bongo. Based on the Sega arcade game that tries to one-up Donkey Kong, the Atari 5200 version looks very faithful to the arcade. Parker Brothers did a good job matching the 3D perspective of the original. The sounds are very good and the controls are decent when not using the 5200's controller. 
The ColecoVision version looks to be a couple notches better in the graphics and sound department. Also, the screen order is more accurate to the arcade. So both are very good conversions of the arcade, however, the ColecoVision version edges out the 5200 with better graphics, sounds, and a more accurate screen order. Defender! The classic Williams arcade game had an amazing port on the 5200. Graphics, gameplay, and sounds are spot on. Only your ship is slightly larger than the original, but you know, that's no biggie. The ColecoVision version is also good, but it just doesn't feel as frantic as the original arcade game. Also, the ship and enemies lack detail by being all one color. And the sounds really don't match the arcade that well. So both games are good and fun, but to me the clear winner here is the Atari 5200 version. Donkey Kong. This game never officially appeared on the 5200, but there is an Atari 8-bit computer version that is absolutely incredible. The graphics are close to the arcade, but it does take a slight hit. The missing ramp is the most obvious. The animation of Mario is absolutely buttery smooth, and it's easier than ever to climb the ladders by holding diagonally on the joystick. The ColecoVision version, on the other hand, well, it looks a little bit better and more like the arcade than the Atari version, but it's also missing a ramp on the barrel stage, a platform on the rivet stage, and the entire cement factory stage. Also, the animation of Mario is a little choppy and it feels very sluggish overall. So, the choice is really obvious for me. Look, I know the ColecoVision version of Donkey Kong was the system seller and everyone loves it, but it just doesn't do it for me like the Atari computer version does. Donkey Kong Jr. Because I have a world record myself as the world's lowest score in Donkey Kong Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know, Keith. So there's no 5200 version here, so let's take a look at the Atari computer version. Again, this is a fantastic game in terms of gameplay, sounds, and controls. The graphics do take a bit of a hit compared to the arcade because it has giant birds, snap jaws, and a lack of detail on the ropes. We also have all four stages just like the arcade. The ColecoVision version looks a little bit better than the Atari 8-bit version, with more detailed graphics and better colors. Junior's animation looks a little wonky though, and some of his sprites look awkward. The sounds are good, but it's missing the fourth stage. So again, choosing between these two versions is easy. The Atari 8-bit version doesn't look quite as good, but it plays much better. Frogger, the classic arcade game by Konami. Yeah, I always thought it was Sega too. This game looks similar enough to the arcade except for that wall in the middle of the screen. Anyway, the controls are interesting. What you have to do is hold the direction you want to move and then press the fire button. No doubt this was Parker Brothers' way of making the game more playable with the 5200's analog controller. Also, there's no music during the gameplay unless I'm missing something. The ColecoVision's graphics aren't quite as detailed as the 5200, but it has music during the gameplay, which makes it more enjoyable. The controls are what you would expect, just press the disc in the direction you want to go. Both of these versions are good games, however, I think the edge is going to go to the ColecoVision here. Frogger 2, 3 Deep. I have never liked this game. What the heck are you supposed to do here? 
The 5200 version has some nice detailed and colorful graphics though. The sounds are pretty good too. As for the controls, they're really the same as Frogger. Hold the direction you want to go and then press the button. The ColecoVision's graphics aren't as good, but the control is better. I can hop around faster in this version. Also, the animation is a bit choppier. I really don't want to play either of these games, but I like the 5200 better for its multicolor and smooth graphics. Galaxian, the classic arcade shooter by Namco. The 5200 version has some nice looking graphics, but the sounds are nothing like the original. And to me, that's a really important element of the game. The controls and gameplay are good enough though. The ColecoVision version looks and sounds more accurate to the arcade. The death sounds of the Galaxians are absolutely spot on. Also, your ship looks just like the arcade does. No contest here, I like the ColecoVision version better, if only for having the correct sound effects. Gateway to Apshai. This is an Atari computer game that was popular enough to have numerous sequels. There is no 5200 version here, I'm looking at the Atari computer game. You move about a dungeon collecting treasure and slaying creatures. Keys open doors and swords kill enemies. This game is kind of like a primitive version of Gauntlet, but it's harder to kill the enemies. The ColecoVision version is basically the same in terms of graphics and sounds, however there is one noticeable difference. It doesn't scroll. It does this snap scroll thing instead. Still, that's really not a big enough difference to recommend one version over the other, so this is going to be a tie. Gorf. A port of the classic Midway arcade game, Gorf is a game with an identity crisis. It just doesn't know what kind of game it wants to be with so many different stages. I feel that the 52 version is unfairly difficult, and plus the graphics are just so plain. It feels like a typing game from Antic Magazine. It does make use of the analog controls though, but I hate the firing. You have to hold the fire button down long enough for the missile to shoot, and that's not how the arcade works. The ColecoVision version is only better because it's easier. The graphics are, well, nothing like the arcade, but at least they're colorful. Also, it's missing the Galaxian stage. So which one would I choose? Well, the ColecoVision version doesn't look like the arcade, but I found it more fun and better looking. Gyrus, the Konami arcade space shooter with catchy music from Johann Sebastian Bach. Again, this is one where the music is necessary, and the 5200 does a great job of replicating it here. The graphics are also good, and your ship and enemies scroll nicely. This is a great home port that really feels like the arcade in terms of gameplay and sounds. The ColecoVision's graphics appear to be in a higher resolution, but the enemy graphics are just one color. It also looks and plays well, but it feels off somehow, like it's harder to hit the enemies or something. The enemy formations when they appear also feel different. It's still pretty fun though. So which one do I like better? Well, the 5200 looks way zoomed in, but it just feels more like the original arcade to me, so I think I like the 5200 version better. Hero or H-E-R-O. An original title from Activision has you rescuing trapped miners in a deep cave using your helicopter pack, laser, and bombs. The graphics are good and the controls are slippery as it could be expected on the 5200. For the most part, the 5200 version looks and sounds like a spruced up 2600 version of the game with better environmental detail. Really, there's not much difference in the game besides how it looks. 
The ColecoVision version, however, looks massively upgraded in the graphics department. There is so much detail, it's almost overwhelming. I like how each level is colored differently, making it look like a different cave. As expected, it sounds and plays great. So while both of these games play fantastic, the ColecoVision's graphics really take it to another level. James Bond 007. This is an original Parker Brothers game, and it's very annoying. I think it wants to be like Moon Patrol, but the fact that I can't hit that dang satellite keeps this game from being enjoyable in the gameplay department. The sounds are blah and the graphics are plain. The ColecoVision version is the same, but with worse scrolling. Also, the graphics are incredibly plain. So, which game is better? I don't really care. This game is just no fun on either system. Jungle Hunt, the classic Taito arcade game originally called Jungle King before the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate said it was too much like Tarzan. The 5200 version is identical to the Atari 8-bit version, and I played that one a ton. The graphics are incredibly detailed, and the controls, well, at least on the Atari 8-bit, are very tight. It also has some very smooth scrolling. I love this game way more than I should have, and now let's take a look at the ColecoVision version. The graphics, while not as detailed, look a bit more like the arcade version. Well, at least the first stage. The swimming stage is blah. But the rocks and cannibal stages look good. The gameplay sounds and controls are also good. So which one do I prefer? Well, I'm still going to go with the Atari version even though the ColecoVision looks closer to the arcade. That awful looking swimming stage really hurts its case. Keystone Capers, an original Activision title by Gary Kitchen. You play as a Keystone cop who's chasing a crook through a department store. You have to avoid objects and collect drop stuff for points. The 5200 version looks nearly identical to the 2600 game. I mean, there's not really a lot of upgrades in the graphics department. The gameplay is okay, but, you know, I always find myself standing around waiting for that elevator to catch the crook. The ColecoVision game looks quite a bit different, though. The animation isn't quite as smooth on the characters, but that's okay, since the screen itself doesn't scroll. The background graphics look nice, but they aren't very detailed. So between the two, I kind of prefer the ColecoVision version because of its updated graphics. Miner 2049er, the mega popular computer game from Big Five Software. You play as Bounty Bob, who has to clean all the nuclear waste in each level by walking over it. Avoid mutated creatures, or eat, kill, defeat them, I don't know, by collecting an object first. The 5200 game is identical to the Atari 8-bit game, and that's not a bad thing. The ColecoVision version is mostly the same, but there are a few differences in the stages. I like the moving elevator on stage 3 better than the 5200's transporter where you have to hit the level you want. It's a bit more fun that way. So which one would I rather play? Well, both. They're both great fun. So I'm going to have to call this one as a tie. Montezuma's Revenge. This is a fantastic original game by Parker Brothers, where you play as Panama Joe seeking treasure in an Aztec temple. The 5200's graphics and gameplay are fantastic. Joe is nicely animated when he jumps, climbs ladders, or even dies. Keys are sometimes challenging and fun to acquire, and they're required to move on to the many interconnected rooms. The ColecoVision version is great too. The graphics, sounds, and gameplay are practically the same as the 5200 game. 
However, I did notice that there's at least one missing frame of Joe animation, and that's where he gets to the top of the ladder. But you know what? Either one of these games is a blast to play, and they're really great fun. This has got to be another tie. Mountain King. I don't really get this game. Yeah, I didn't read the manual, but did you read the E.T. manual before declaring it the worst game ever? I don't think so. Anyway, as far as I can tell, you need to collect these diamonds and avoid bats to get the high score. The graphics are extremely plain, but at least the scrolling is nice. It's basically the same game on both systems, but the ColecoVision scrolling is a little bit choppy. As for which game is better, eh, they're both basically the same, so this is a tie. Mr. Do, an arcade game by Universal where you play as Mr. Do collecting cherries in the ground while avoiding monsters. This is the Atari 8-bit version and it's very close to the arcade game in terms of graphics and sounds. The control is a bit frustrating because it's easy to overshoot the spot where you want to go and then you have to backtrack. I like that Mr. Dew himself is colorful and nicely animated here. The ColecoVision version is also very good in terms of graphics and sounds. Control is still troublesome and the animation is choppy. Also, the character graphics, including Mr. Do, are just one color. These are both good versions of Mr. Do, however, I feel that the Atari 8-bit has the edge here. Mr. Do's Castle. The sequel to Mr. Do, but now you are trapped in a castle, knocking down the cherries with a hammer while avoiding enemies. You can attack by dropping cherries on them, but it's just not as enjoyable as the original. The 5200 version has nice graphics and sounds, and the ColecoVision version looks to have a higher resolution and it also looks great. The animation of Mr. Do is smooth and fast in both versions. But between the two, I think the ColecoVision version is a bit better. Oil's Well. This game was created at the height of Pac-Man fever. In it, you are a drilling machine collecting dots? Oil pods? I don't know. What I do know is that you can eat your enemies so long as they don't touch the pipe. Pressing the button pulls your machine back the way it came. The Atari 8-bit version is fast and fun without being frustrating. The ColecoVision version is essentially the same game, but your pipe is red, making it much easier to see. This is a fun game, and I enjoyed both of them equally, so this is a tie. Pitfall, the classic Atari 2600 game from Activision, appears with a slight graphical upgrade on the 5200. The gameplay is the same, however, and the sounds are a little bit different. Harry's jump just doesn't sound right. The ColecoVision version has that same single color style as many other ColecoVision games. Harry's multicolored though, which is nice. However, his running and jumping animation is just odd. It's a fun game, but honestly, I'd rather play the 5200 game since it feels more like the original. Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns. The sequel to Pitfall has Harry searching the jungle for his niece Rhonda and his mountain lion friend named Quickclaw. These characters are from the cartoon, in case you're curious. The 5200 game is also similar to the original 2600 game, just with better graphics. The music, however, is exactly the same. The ColecoVision version is also very good, but it suffers from the same simple graphic style as the first game. It just lacks the detail of the 5200 version. 
And again, Harry's animation is just awkward looking. Still, both games are fun to play, however, I prefer the better graphics and normal looking run animation from the 5200 game. Popeye. A port of the Nintendo arcade game by Parker Brothers, I played this a ton on my Atari 800XL. Basically guide Popeye to collect Olive Oil's hearts, notes, and letters, all while avoiding Bluto and the Sea Witch. The 5200 version has great graphics, sounds, and gameplay, and smooth animation. Controls are certainly more challenging than in a standard Atari joystick, though. The ColecoVision version looks and plays well, but again has choppy sprite animation. Popeye, Bluto, and the objects move like they're on a grid. This is something I expect to see when everything is made up of tiles instead of sprites. Also, I would have liked Popeye to have more colors instead of just one. So for me, choosing one over the other is pretty easy. I just prefer the 5200 smoother animation and multicolor sprites. Hubert, the classic Gottlieb arcade game brought home by Parker Brothers. Change the colors of all the cubes on the pyramid and avoid the enemies. The 5200 version looks and plays similarly to the arcade. However, there is one huge issue on the 5200. Similar to Frogger, you have to press the button to jump. Sadly, that's a trade-off due to the controller, but that carries over when using any controller. The ColecoVision version doesn't suffer from that issue, but controlling Cubert just doesn't feel responsive. It's like his feet have maple syrup on them or something. Also, the pyramid looks a little stretched compared to the arcade, but that doesn't really hurt the gameplay, which I think is very similar to the arcade. So which one do I prefer? Well, I think I like the ColecoVision version better. The graphics are not dithered like the 5200, and the control just doesn't require me to press a button for every jump. Quest for Quintana Roo I think this was originally a computer game where you play as Yucatan Sam searching the Quintana Roo temple for the riches inside. I've never played this game before, so I have really no idea what I'm doing. Both of these games appear to be the same, but I did figure out how to fire the gun in the ColecoVision version. Since I didn't have a whole lot to go on and I couldn't figure out what to do, I'm just going to have to call this one a draw. These games seem pretty similar anyway. River Raid the classic Activision game by Carol Shaw. The 5200 game is an enhanced version of the original 2600 game where you travel a river blasting bridges, ships, and helicopters. The graphics are enhanced with more detail on the river and even mountains on the sides. The game is still a ton of fun to play even with the extra challenge of using the 5200 controller. The ColecoVision game is also very fun, but the graphics have taken a huge hit. The resolution seems higher, but the shore looks extremely plain, even though there are some objects on the side like rocket launchers and satellite dishes. Thankfully, the scrolling is nice and smooth, and it plays very nice. So while both of these games play essentially the same, I'm more likely to play the 5200 game because of the better graphics and how it feels closer to the original. Next is Midway's classic arcade game Spy Hunter, which appears here on the Atari 8-bit computer. Drive your spy vehicle shooting the blue bad guys. The graphics are okay, I guess. They just seem a little plain. Also, where's the theme music? That should be playing during the game. And I think I'm playing easy mode, but I keep crashing every few seconds. I'm starting to wonder if maybe this is a prototype game. Anyway, the ColecoVision version is great. It has the music during the game, and it plays just like the arcade. The scrolling also seems smooth compared to the other ColecoVision games. So really, this just doesn't seem like a contest to me. The ColecoVision version feels way more like the arcade game, and it's more fun in my opinion. 
Star Trek Strategic Operations Simulator. This is based on the Sega Vector arcade game where you pilot the Enterprise to protect your star bases from Klingons. Again, the 5200 version feels like an enhanced 2600 port, which is fine because that game was really good. I do like the detailed graphics of the Klingons in the lower part of the screen. Also, the sounds are good and the gameplay is fast. The ColecoVision version plays basically the same, but there's less detail in the enemy ships on the lower screen. Also, that lower screen is slightly smaller than the 5200 one. I guess that's nice though, because it makes the radar screen bigger. Anyway, I wonder which one Mr. Spock would prefer. I think he would say that both games are great, it's only logical that there be a tie. Star Wars The Arcade Game Based on the Atari arcade game, you play as Luke Skywalker in an attempt to destroy the Death Star in your X-Wing fighter. Now while I adore the arcade game, I've always kind of hated these 8-bit home ports of the game. They just don't feel right. Also, hitting your target just feels off. The 5200 uses its analog controls to move your crosshair around the screen, which I guess kind of mimics the yoke controller of the arcade. The ColecoVision version is very similar. This time the X-Wing's graphics look a little bit more detailed. Too bad the sounds are kind of lame. Also, there's no Death Star explosion in the ColecoVision game? What gives? So which game do I prefer? I mean, neither of them feel right, but the 5200 game just feels more polished. Super Cobra, another conversion of a Konami arcade game from Parker Brothers. Guide your helicopter through caverns, blasting enemies. The 5200 game looks kind of bland, but at least the look of the caverns are interesting. The scrolling is smooth and the gameplay is good enough. The ColecoVision version also has nice, smoothly scrolling graphics. But what's odd are how the bombs fall down diagonally instead of downward. That changes how one plays the game, honestly. Overall, both games are decent enough shooters, but this is a case where I prefer the 5200 game. Tapper. In Tapper, you play as a bartender slinging root beer, soda, or maybe it's Mountain Dew, down a bar to keep thirsty patrons happy. Yes, this is another arcade conversion that appeared on the Atari 8-bit, but not on the 5200. Anyway, this version has some pretty chunky graphics. It does play well, but the music is pretty ear grating. The ColecoVision version has some nice, higher resolution graphics. The sounds and music are also spot on to the arcade game. And finally, the player sprite has multiple colors. Thank you! This is a case where the ColecoVision version is far superior to the Atari version. Time Pilot, the Konami arcade game where you blast enemy aircraft in different eras. This is a really great, I think, homebrew for the Atari computer. Honestly, if the graphics weren't so chunky, it would be indistinguishable from the arcade. This one controls and plays great. Kudos to whoever made this one. The ColecoVision version is, well, a little rough. The sounds aren't great and the graphics are very choppy. Also, the sprites, if they even are sprites, are single color yet again. This isn't really a contest. Clearly, the Atari Homebrew is a better game, and honestly, I don't care if it's a homebrew or not, I'd rather play this one. Tutankham, based on another Konami arcade game, this one sees you hunting King Tut's tomb for treasure. There is no 5200 game, but there is an Atari 8-bit prototype that's frankly terrible. It needed a lot more work. There's also a clone of the game that appeared in Antic Magazine called King Tut's Tomb that is fantastic. 
This one is actually a little more polished than the original arcade game. Anyway, the ColecoVision game is very good. The scrolling isn't great though, but at least your character is multicolored. Also, Tutankham would have been a much better game if you could shoot up and down instead of just left and right. Anyway, if I had to pick one game or the other, I'd probably pick the of the era King Tut's Tomb homebrew game because it really underscores how even a homebrew programmer can outdo the competition. Zaxxon. One of the most well-known classic arcade games was Sega's Zaxxon, a pseudo 3D shooter where you maneuver your jet through floating bases, taking out fuel tanks, jets, and turrets. I remember playing this same 5200 version on my Atari 400 computer and loading it from tape. It's got some good scrolling and gameplay, but it's lacking in the graphics department. The ColecoVision version looks much closer to the arcade, but the scrolling, yet again, is choppy. Fortunately, the gameplay and sounds make up for it. So my preferred version of the game would be the ColecoVision version. Despite the choppy scrolling, it just feels more like the arcade game. Zenji. This is a weird puzzle game from Activision where you twist the dials in order to connect them all. It's a bit frustrating and I feel like they don't give you enough time to figure it out. Or maybe I'm just not smart enough to, I don't know. It has some nice oriental sounding music and the graphics are appropriate for the game. The ColecoVision version is practically the same game but with slightly less colorful graphics. Both games are fun if you enjoy this type of game and there's really no significant advantage so I would be fine playing either one of them. Well, there you have it, 39 Atari 5200 slash Atari computer games compared to their ColecoVision counterparts. Which games do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. With that said, thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.